Hi, this is Samir Shemri. Uh, I'm so glad and honored uh, to be part of the International Society for Microvigilance activity to celebrate the uh, World Patient Safety uh, Day. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about a very uh, important topic and one of the very important initiatives by the World Health Organization, which is the third World Health Organization Patient Safety Challenge and their name, Medication Without Harm. This the third one, uh, and this is considered still ongoing uh, because it's planned. It started in 2016 and it's for five years. So we still have another two years for this uh, initiative. And it's already been one of the successful uh, initiatives by the WHO. This is just my disclaimer. This is my uh, own uh, personal views of this presentation. It's only representing me. Uh, as, a, as an author of this, uh, of talk of this, speaker of this presentation. So whenever you see this map, uh, this is directly will link you to the medication without harm initiative by the WHO. This is just simply mean that we cannot, uh, we don't have anyone did not take medication. Everywhere, every house, every person, child, elderly, young, woman, female, all of us, at one time of their life, they need to take medication. That's why the WHO said it's really important to make sure this medication, the risk from this medication is really, uh, we try to mitigate and reduce the risk of this medication. So this map, uh, this just directly will link it to the medication without harm. So as a statistic, just to imagine the problem of this, uh, of the uh, medication or the risk of medication. In England only, there are around quarter billion medication errors occur. Uh, in all these small countries, it's around 60 million people living in there. So at, in their, like one time of their life, uh, someone will get a medication error. Unfortunately, which is dangerous, like about 5.5 million annually clinically significant error occur. That's me. this error could lead, lead to harm to the patient. It depends on the type of the harm, but this is really, really big uh, number, good big statistics. Uh, unfortunately too, that in the uh, low and middle income countries, this risk doubled the developed countries like England. So this is a really uh, need to focus on. And most of these experience uh, were due to the medication related harm uh, compared to those in higher income countries. So uh, I'll just give an example to just know or, or know, like imagine the problem. This guy, uh, Mr. I mean, uh, this, he was 65 years old man and uh, he's fine, he just has, as usual, like unfortunately we have high blood pressure, diabetes, and other chronic diseases. Uh, he went to the hospital because he has hypertension, hyperglycemia. So he, the hypertension blood pressure had been treated and he was normalized and he wa went sent to the home. During the hospital, he has hyperuricemia, which is increasing the level of uric acid. And the uh, physician there did not treat it because he said this patient did not yet have gout. So there is no treatment for this patient. So in two weeks, I mean, so, uh, went to the uh, uh, to the polyclinic just for follow up, and the physician there found just checking his medication and, and his lab, and he found that he had high uric acid, but he did not find that medication. He gave him one of the medication, alabrinol, and uh, Mr. Ami started this medication, and unfortunately, he developed a very bad scratch, Stephen Johnson syndrome. He went to the hospital. He has more complication from this, uh, this uh, like taking the alipinol. And unfortunately, Mr. Rami died because of this complication. They found later that there is a genetic interaction in this country where I mean, Mr. Rami lived uh, in part of Asia uh, that it's not uh, advisable to use aloe in all those patients, all the specific patients to be used. Unfortunately, that phys physician did not know that. And this small mistake led to uh, 
patient died. So this is one of the stories that really we need to act on, on that. Another story, we have like many stories, just for the sake of the time, this little child, uh, he's fine, he's active child, he's okay, he's healthy, he has nothing, uh, and the only has problem with the sleep disorder. He couldn't just uh, get to sleep. So he went to the uh, physician, he gave him uh, one of the medication, he started using this drug, his parents found that he's fine, he sleep well, and everything is fine. And, uh, and when his medication finished, uh, his parents went to the hospital to get the refill. Then uh, again, as usual, uh, this little child take his or his mother give him his medication, and unfortunately, in the morning when his father tried to wake him up, he couldn't because he found him died. And when they investigate that, they found that the uh, the drug they been prescribed before it's called tryptophan, which is to help in sleeping. Unfortunately, when it went, when it went to the farm in the hospital in pharmacy, they uh, mix up and when they do the compounding, they change or they, of course, mistakenly, the uh, the substance from tryptophan to baclofen, which is uh, a potent muscle relaxant. Unfortunately, this little boy, uh, he had uh, respiratory failure during his sleep and he died because of the mistake. So this is just to tell you. How big the problem if we are not really focused or not really vigilant with that? And this is just one of two stories from many, many stories. Just mentioned to say this photo is not necessarily representing those real uh, story. So this is only like another example why we still have this problem. This is right, toughest. It's one used for allergy, which is, has an active ingredient, clemastin. And the, the other one, Tavis Nandrausi, is supposed to have similar drug or drug from the same group, at least it's not drowsy. Unfortunately, it's totally different drug. And this is where the mistake usually happens. The third one, Tavis Sinus, it's logically, it has at least one of these medications, but some medic other medication used for sinus. Unfortunately, it's totally different medication. Acetaminophen, acetaminophen. So this is why we still need to prevent these these error that could happen from these samples. So these these product pictures should not be allowed to be looking like this to avoid medication error. So another example that's why we need to focus, why we need to be vigilant when you are using medication, because we found more like min, min, majority of uh, emergency department visit usually due to medication. And unfortunately, worldwide, uh, the most common disease, cardiovascular diseases, hypertension, diabetes, etc. you find it in most of the country, at least in, in my, uh, like this area in the Middle East, we found these, these uh, diseases are common and endemic in our uh, population. So this study found that the most common medication that lead to an uh, emergency visit are Warfarin, insulin, and digoxin, and this medication used for cardiovascular diseases, used for diabetes, and this is the most common diseases. They found this medication are 35 times greater than other medications. So imagine how big the problem is in our in our population worldwide or even uh, here. So we really don't need to focus on this part. Unfortunately, it's really missing uh, a lot. So. When you look at the medication in your system and medication processes, we found that the most common error happened at administration process. We have prescribing, dispensing, administration, monitoring, prescribing. These are medication use system processes. Unfortunately, which is one of the more dangerous processes, is administration of the medicine, especially when we talk about the intravenous or IM or parenteral uh, uh, injection. So almost 50% of medication essence are happening in administration. So we really need to focus each, which one we need to uh, have more strategy to reduce these issues. So each, each hospital or each institution, they need to do their own analysis to see uh, where the problem is. So these results not necessarily represent the, uh, the, the, the other institution. This is just from the uh, WHO uh, website. So 
what we are looking here, we want to prevent this part, which is the preventable adverse drug reaction, because the other potential, also we need to work with the other, uh, like circle within this uh, medication error, but some of the potential near miss, also we need to focus on them, but the one which we associated with harm, this is the major part we really need to focus on and work and have more strategy to reduce things. This part, which is uh, non-preventable adverse reaction, however, there's a lot of activities try to even to work in this area to prevent the harm from this, this medication, especially when we talk about the, the new initiative by the WHO, which is zero harm to our patient. So again, when you see this map, that's mean this is our third initiative with this medication without harm. So we have the third initiative. So what is the first and second? Of course, the third with it, we have a first and second. So the WHO started in 2005, they think about where the problem, where the majority of the problem that we have. So they start the first one, which is clean care and safer care. The other one is safe surgery, safe life. So I'll talk just quickly uh, about them. The first one, which was launched in 2005, uh, and what's, this was the, the core program of the World Alliance for Patient Safety, which is aimed to strengthen the uh, other, the, all the country with respect of the uh, clear care. Clean care is safer care. Uh, and this is related to the health care associated infection because there was a problem with the infection um, in the hospital. Uh, this is happened due to the health care uh, during like treating the patient. So they want to limit these, uh, these, these uh, risks. So the clean care uh, have like result in different many uh, many uh, activities or many products. One of them, the alcohol gel that is already being used currently, especially with the corona problem, it's really been helpful to limit the uh, healthcare associated infection. The other one, which is Safe Surgery, Safe Lives, which was uh, launched in 2008, this is because, you know, there's different story of a lot of mistake, a lot of error happened uh, during the, the surgery. So the WHO with their uh, team, they start to have uh, a lot of procedure, a lot of uh, policy, a lot of checklist to make sure this is the right patient. This is the right position that we need to do surgery. This is the, the, the uh, where we want to uh, do an intervention in, in this patient. So these are the two uh, initiatives that was launched by the, uh, the, uh, the ratio. So why we need this, the, the medication without harm challenge, which is the COVID third uh, the British uh, Global Patient Safety Challenge. Uh, because the global cost of medication is around 42 billion US dollars annually, this is a huge amount of money. So, and unfortunately, this is due to the chronic hospitalization, harm to the patient, and also disability. So it's not only the cost, it's also burden on the, on the patient, on the people, and this will be burden on the, on the country. This, this is why we really need to do that. As I mentioned before, it started 2016, and it's at different stages until 2020 and uh, to do an evaluation. But I can tell you that's really, really been a lot of focus on this initiative in different countries. I'll give an example. My, my country, Saudi Arabia, is really uh, working in this. So it's it's really, uh, if anyone is not really working, still there's a time to do, and this is really have a really big impact in, in our patient. So it was launched in 2017, uh, March 29th in Bonn, Germany, and it was aimed to reduce the global burden of severe preventable medication error harm by 80% in the next five years. Someone will say it's really a huge number. Uh, as usual, I mean, it's big uh, percentage. If you imagine that's around between 75 to 90 of medication error are preventable, so that's 50%, I believe it's, it's achievable. So we really need to, need to work on that. And this, of course, coordinated by the uh, WHO. So what need to be done or start, or what was the objective? What were the objectives of this one? Or what, what are they gonna do with this one? So the first of all, they, the WHO with the team they are selected, assess the scope and nature of avoidable, avoidable harm. So what's the kind of situation, what they need to do, and then based on that as background, start to create a framework of action for patient, healthcare professional also in the country levels. And this, the framework will help to develop a guidance 
the material technology tools that will be used to reduce the uh, the medication error or to achieve the aim of this one and the sorry the aim of the other or the to, to approach to achieve the aim of this initiative so one of the main parts that the WHO and the team working with that they say we need to engage the stakeholder partners industry to raise the awareness because we still have uh, like healthcare professionals um, decision maker hospital not really even pharma company not really engage in the part and the most important part which is empowering patient families and their carers because if you don't involve patient believe me it will not be successful uh, initiative this is really the uh, the milestone of this uh, initiative so when they do that when they assess when they see where we have to start we have a lot a lot of issue that we need to care but they will need really want to have a priority action to do that so they have three key action areas of medication uh, action and these are most visible and most pay, uh, public facing aspect and these uh, priorities were high risk medicine uh, situation polypharmacy and transition of care so the WHO asked for experts in these uh, areas. So each group or each um, um, uh, area have a specific group working with this one, formerly a technical working groups uh, for transitive care, pharmacy, polypharmacy, and high risk uh, situation. And those people, or this group, or this expert, they start to perform assessment. What is the what we need to do? What we have? What is the situation? Where do where when when we have the problem, where we can apply this one? It's like, do we need to have pilots in the hospital, or do we need to have polyclinics? So all these questions they started. So these uh, groups they they were really working hard to uh, to try to have, find or to have a project from this uh, initiative. So the high risk medication, and this is just an example of the uh, list of the medication. So when I talk about high risk medication. And also, there is also to call high risk situation to be more clear. High risk situation includes the high risk medication and also high risk population, meaning elderly, children, pregnant women, and other patients there is a need. So we talk about high risk situation. Part of from this is high risk medication, which is uh, they have a list of medications that really need to be focused on. These the most medications that are associated with the, with the error, and also not necessarily to be this one. Uh, also, this medication, if this happened and or if an error happened with them, it's led to uh, a big uh, an issue with the patient, could be like life-threatening uh, risk or also death of patient. So this we call the called A pinch. This is the start of the first uh, letter. And the effective, including aminoglycoside, amphotericin B, and others, uh, concentration as uh, potassium, which is not allowed to be within the ward should be in the pharmacy uh, and also insulin all type of insulin narcotics uh, chemotherapeutic agent immunosuppressant or anticoagulants heparin etc so this is just an example that others list uh, increase of uh, so long list of medications that really each hospital needs to be part which is the call high alert uh, medication high risk medication uh, here so this is just an example some hospitals have already been applied this one in their in their hospital this is an example of, from wales and this is to see how really uh, detailed the medication administration record to make sure this is the, the, the really bright patient make sure there is a there is a uh, high risk medication that you need to be uh, focused on so when they start the challenge the uh, the the virtual and the team start to have the um, the specific domain for this one which is this is where where we really need to work on starting from patient and the public medicine healthcare professional systems and practices of medication management so the first one which is patient and the public the, uh, the 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 purpose of this part is to make sure of the public awareness on medication to enhance the patient reporting unfortunately there until recently some countries are not allowed the uh, patient reporting however now most of the countries really Luckily, they're they are, uh, allowing that because when you look at this report, you will really benefit from this report, especially when we talk about medication that's yours for uh, psychiatry, medication that's yours for more changes, and et cetera, and even other chronic diseases. Because really, uh, several studies found that 
the patient reported really of big value uh, for, for, for them. Uh, patient engagement, also it's really, uh, it's really important. Uh, make sure the patient is really part of the uh, of the of the uh, therapeutic plan. Make sure the patient being uh, discussed with which medication they, they really uh, want to have and etc. Involve the patient organization is really important because these organizations who who really are in touch with the patient know what they really need. So it's really important. So this is one of the objectives or the need to, to be done on the patient and, and public. When we talk about medicine. A lot of uh, a lot of a lot of activities need to be done. Like the problem with the lookalike sound alike. Make sure the naming and labeling on packages of the drug is really not uh, confused with other medication. And several re regulatory body they have different program for that. And also the pharma and also the hospital they need to make sure they don't have lookalike and sound alike medication as much as possible. And also they need to make sure of the quality of the medication. We know that we recently uh, found different quality issue with the medication. This is one of the, also the focus of this initiative for that. Uh, make sure that the, there's the right product or at point of care, the right patient. We know that certain drugs are like five R's, seven R's, etc. And also the most important is logistic and storage. And this is unfortunately been uh, forgetting in some places. Uh, when talking about storage, uh, like let's give an example, the uh, some country in the Middle East, when in the summer it's really, really hot. So when you put the, uh, with the habit of put the, the drug in the car or even the house when it's really hot, uh, especially talking about medication, talk about the insulin. It could be easily break down because you know it's protein, and with the summer it could really not not been working. So we believe, and some study found that uh, some medication are not inactive because of the uh, of the effect of the temperature. Even in other countries, we want to call about very cold. It's also it's really uh, have an impact. So this is also need to be focused on on this uh, initiative. Healthcare professional. It's really a big area for improvement. Education, education, education. It's really one of the areas that we really need to focus on. Training. Uh, this is an, an, an area to be improved. We need to do that frequently with the profession because majority, like big number of healthcare professionals, they really need to do education in the area of education area. Communication. This is one of the also things that we are lacking to uh, know how to communicate, especially when we talk about ordering medication. However, I know this, the, you know, as you know, there's ma many of the institutions are preventing verbal order. If your institution is still using that, please try to minimize the verbal order and have a strategy for that. Communication is really important. And that is also important of the uh, patient, uh, healthcare patient interaction. We need to spend time with other patients. Unfortunately, most of the healthcare professionals don't. Some they do, but, but they, they, we really need to focus on that. And also we need to enhance the reporting, still have under reporting an issue everywhere. So this is one of the areas that we need to focus on. Leadership and governance. This is really a, a very good area for that. If you have an institution with the belief from the leaders in this institution and in medication safety, it's done. That means this will be an excellent institution for that. Also, the uh, area for medication use we need to focus on, we talk about the practice, prescribing, you need to apply the, all the new technology. We do want to have like handwriting uh, as much as we can. Uh, we talk about illegible, eligible handwriting. Uh, we need to focus on dispensing, administration, as mentioned before, it's one of the area that it's really uh, dangerous when it's uh, error happened, monitoring and, and evaluation is also part of that. So after the finish, a three, uh, a great three technical document being published. Uh, this is the uh, link for that. Please, if you did not see these documents, go there and and, uh, and access them. It's free. Uh, you can uh, get a lot of information. It's really uh, been like almost two years of work. People were working on these documents. So please go and access them. So also there's also the general idea of the uh, the initiative, and it's having three languages: in English and Arabic. And also and in French and also the other uh, documents that have in, like have in other uh, languages. So please just access the website the WHO. You'll see a lot of the of the information. We really want to avoid that story. This is our own patient because you know medication error could lead to uh, a really harmful uh, complication or sequences. So please focus uh, on that. 
and, and, and safety always to be aware that we need to know all the information uh, and what did you see and also what you didn't, uh, you didn't know. So uh, it's a good initiative. We need to focus on and please make sure that our patient safety uh, is first. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and again, uh, be safe and please uh, celebrate uh, the World Patient Safety Day uh, by focusing on the care of our uh, patient. Thank you so, so, so much.